What is the definition of due diligence in real estate? So I'm Laurel, the millionaire maker. I wrote books about this. Due diligence is all of the research, market research, people research. We're going to go through it all. You have got to do due diligence. You just don't jump in. So the three things I want to talk about, number one, the place you should never do due diligence. Then I'm going to give you seven very specific things around due diligence for any asset, any asset class that you need to be thinking of. And then number three, I'm going to give you the four areas of overarching due diligence, what departments, what categories you really need to be looking at, and what are some nuances. So due diligence could either make a deal, make you a millionaire, or kill a deal and make you broke. So this is serious. Get a pen and paper. So number one, what is the number one place you should never do due diligence? And I don't care if you're looking at a person, a piece of real estate, an asset, due diligence on the internet. I call it the bathroom wall because it is a non-deleting platform. It's like you can write graffiti about anyone in any topic. There's no relevance, real or not, including Wikipedia. They just find like the negative things and put them out there. There's no like truth telling, like where I was even born isn't even accurate. Getting that changed is like an act of God. So hopefully somebody from Wikipedia might watch this and actually come and get the truth from my life. I think I know it. I know the day I was born. So put it on there right. So <laughs> due diligence is interesting. The bathroom wall is not the place to do it. In fact, given that media is not even truth telling anymore between the bathroom wall and news outlets where do you get the truth all right so let's dig down deep where do you get it you got to go to the source who's producing the documents for due diligence in real estate who's producing the syndication so i'm going to give you those four overarching areas but i'm telling you the bathroom wall the internet is not where you do it your friends and family is not where you do it you're not going to ask your friends and family who don't do real estate either what they might do or your workmates. If you're, t if the people you work with, which by the way, don't call them friends, you just all kind of rock up and work together. Um, you might be friendly, but like, it's so interesting how so many of you get advice from odd sources. Most importantly, people who have never done what you want to do. So why are you asking opinions? Ask an expert, somebody who's got five, 10 X what you want in your life financial or with business. So that's where you don't go. Let's go to where you go. I'm actually going to read these and, and dissect them. The seven things you have to do when you're doing due diligence. Number one is assuming you have money rules. And if you don't, you want to read my wealth cycle investing book where I go through a whole series of money rules. In fact, we'll give you a link below with a gift that gives you some introductory ideas of what money rules are. So are, is the deal, whatever deal you're doing in real estate, or deal congruent with your money rules and your values. So for example, I'm in the cannabis business, right? I have licenses and there are people who are completely opposed. I mean, I grew up in a farm girl of Nebraska and marijuana was a drug. And so, you know, I still have people saying I'm in the drug business. Now I'm in medical marijuana. It's called mom's meds business. My point is it's just not congruent with some people's values. So that's fine. Don't do it. But it's a great example. It's probably the best example I have recently of incongruent money rules and values. So if it's not congruent, don't do it. If you're in California, you know you have a squatter problem. Why would you be a landlord just because you love California when you can like let a tenant live there for free for a year? So some of you have got to start thinking more logically and common sense and know your local laws. That's obvious in due diligence. Number two, what's the exit strategy of this project? Everybody talks about getting in. In fact, I always say there's this process I take people through, design your divorce while you're in love. And I'm not talking about a, a personal marriage divorce. I'm talking about a business divorce. Everybody gets excited when the business gets, you know, going into, you know, and it's exciting. And then the cash flow starts. No one talks about how this thing's going to stop. How, how are we going to divorce? How are we going to exit? Who gets the mailbox keys? Who gets the URL? Who gets the database? who gets any leftover capital? How are we doing all of this? Critical. What does big money mean to you? What does big money mean? So I've been in real estate deals. I've been in cannabis deals, gas and oil deals, lots of business deals. So big money for some of you is striking a $10,000 check. Some people at a zero and big money is a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollar check. And for some, they won't even get out of bed unless they can strike a half million or a million dollar check. I had an investor come to me recently and say, find me a $500 million project. That's what I want to invest in. So for some of you, you're thinking your tens and fifteens or twenties are big. Those are all beginning numbers just to get to the playing field. Number four, who has the oversight and is it transparent? Meaning in this world of technology, almost every good investment vehicle has a portal 
or a website, even if it's password protected, where it continues to transparently show you what's going on in your project. We actually have one for our cannabis projects where we're showing pictures along our journey of the build, of building hoop houses, putting the Connex boxes up. I have real estate portals. Um, almost every one of my real estate partners has a portal. I can see what's going on on the property, where we are from mortgage payments to cash flow to what the uh, interest rates are if there's any tenant issues, vacancy issues, any of that. So portal issues are critical. So is there transparency and who has oversight, right? Do you have a CFO? Do you have a bookkeeper? Is it a third party doing it? Or is it just one of the partners that gets to control all the money and all of the process? All right, number five, are the economics sound? That's just in general, right? If you're doing a real estate transaction in today's market, in 2023 is when we're recording this, are the economic sound? Are you in the right state? Again, I'm picking on California because of the squatter problem, but Idaho's got a squatter problem. Washington, Oregon, a lot of them have squatter problem. New York. So again, watch where you're investing and what you're doing and are the economic sound. Common sense. Run it by a really good tax strategist, somebody who understands the law. Like get a good team around you. If you just join our community, which I'm going to give you a link below to talk to one of our strategists about joining our community. Start really writing out your money rules, write out your due diligence, know what you're doing, be around thousands of us that this is what we do all day. So then you have people to lean into to pick up a phone and say, hey, would you do this deal? What do you think about this market? How would you do this mortgage? How would you do the financing? We have lots of creativity given that we've been doing this for over two decades. Number six, is there even a business plan? I don't care if it's a one page overarching business plan. Some business plans actually can just be documented out on a spreadsheet with timelines, actions, who's doing what, when, how. You got to have a plan or is this just some emotional idea? It's amazing the amount of emotional ideas that I get. The amount of people who apply for Shark Tank. I have a video on Shark Tank. Anything that you're wanting to find, go to my search bar, see that I've actually done a video on it. And if I haven't, go to the comment section, say, hey, would you do a video on this? But most of the people that go to Shark Tank, they don't have a deal. They have an idea and it takes months to get them ready to actually put it into a deal that people would invest in. Most of you have interesting ideas that are not investable at this minute. And then the last one is who's on your team. One of my greatest mentors said money will follow a management team. So put together or build a management team. By coming to our community, I'm on a lot of people's teams. I'm on their boards. I'm an advisor from a not like licensed advisor, but just a strategist to give inputs to as simple as an operating agreement. So many of you, you get into real estate and you form an LLC and all of a sudden you have 50-50 partner. Well, is it really 50-50 or should it have been 60-40? Who's doing what? Are you married? What happens upon a death? What happens upon a tenant problem? Do you have capital calls? I can give you tons of questions. Most of you do not know on due diligence and are putting really weak operating agreements together. Or worse, you're just going to some dot-com and buying some cheap $20 stock and block operating agreement. It's not going to get you through, especially if you have a bad exit or a fight with bad partners. Now, before I go to the last, the four overarching pieces of due diligence and what departments and areas, I want you to subscribe to the channel, click the notification button, be here five days a week. I don't do this for my health, I do it for you because you need business and financial literacy and just common sense. So be out here, have your kids watch it, have the people you hang out with watch it. You are the sum of those that influence you. So all of us, like y'all need to get smarter with money, especially with due diligence in real estate. So what are the four areas that you absolutely need to be looking at? I'm going to put operations and again, that management team up first. Who's running the project? It's amazing to me how many people come through all sorts of social channels, which thank you for coming through and asking us questions. Go to asklaurel.com. You can ask any question, anytime, make a request. It's A-S-K-L-O-R-A-L. -L. Come talk to us. Ask us a question, talk to one of my strategists, see if we can help you. But I can tell you that management team is one of the most important things you put together in your lifetime. Because if you are a newbie, right? And boy, I could name names. I bet there's a dozen of you. You're self-proclaimed Lone Rangers and you're proud of it. I would say you're suffering and ignorant. Sorry, but you are. Doing it by yourself is a choice to suffer because you are hoping you know what you do, but you might not. When you get a mentor, which I've had mentors my whole life, you get their Rolodex, you understand their, their costly mistakes, they introduce you to opportunities, they shortcut you to places and things you don't even know you need, and systems and teams, chart of accounts for bookkeeping, mentors give you those things. You can find them, you can hope it's right. To me, that's risky, especially when you're going to go into this new asset class called real estate. So operations and management team, number one, no one's going to give you money for your first deal. If they are, they're crazy because you don't even know what you're doing. So that's why you want to join a team. So you have experience on the team to make sure it works. Number two, financing, where's the money coming from? Do you have a finance department? Do you have a CFO? Number three, technology. 
right? Is, do you have the right FinTech? Do you have the right systems? Even a bookkeeper with the right structure to even keep the project together. And then a good lawyer, not just a stock and block lawyer who reads documents, a lawyer who's done real estate, a lawyer who's done gas and oil, a lawyer who's done business. I have business lawyers, not just lawyers who know how to push paperwork through to the courts. Those are interesting, not strategic enough for my brain and my team. So make sure you have good legal, tax, tech, operations. You get it? You got to have a team. Hire mine. Love to have you be on our team. Love to help you bring projects so we can actually look at them and make them viable for you. I have only multimillionaires as coaches in my real estate category. So like we got the best in class. Ours don't read a script like a lot of them. And I can give you five prominent names of people. They pay their people 20 an hour to read you a script. Call that real estate coaching. I think it's horrifying. So we have millionaires. We have people who have lived and breathed in all of these structures. So come join us. Click on the link below. Go get a strategy session from one of our team and uh, ask any question at any time. Join our membership, asklaurel.com. Talk to you tomorrow.